Hi there, my name is David Awad. I am one of the wonderful developer evangelists here at R3 working on Corda. And today, I'm going to give you a quick, non-technical introduction to how the blockchain works and what it is with a quick walkthrough. Let's get started. When we think about blockchain, it might be easier just to imagine that you had a spreadsheet that you shared with some coworkers on a single office computer. Let's imagine there's some important data on it that you need to refer to every day to check who's doing what work for the day. Maybe there are rows and there are columns that can be edited in any way and you can hit undo to view the way the sheet used to look before. Every day, different people go onto the computer, they work on the sheet, they make changes, and then they go home. Simple enough. This setup actually has a bunch of issues, but I'll bring up a few to illustrate our point. The first is that the information isn't cloud-based. It can't really be recovered easily. There's only that one computer, and if anything happens to it, we've lost our information, and there's no way to get it again. The second problem is that we can't actually moderate the edits in any serious way. A manager can't approve or deny them, so there's no trusted entity to make sure that the edits are valid, and any edit can be undone after the fact in addition to the fact that people can just write over each other's edits, which can also be a bit of a problem. Now, the last piece of this is that you also can't tell who writes what. You can't share individual pieces either. Anytime you make an edit or you want to share the sheet, everyone has to have the entire sheet in order to make the edit. And because you can't see who makes which edits at which times, well, it can get a little bit tricky to manage your access in a meaningful way in order to have trust between all of the parties. We know there are things like databases that can take our spreadsheets into the cloud and add certain features we want here, like user accounts, but we don't have a robust set of permissions, backup, data privacy, and data controls that we'd want to have if we were using a setup like this in production. This, of course, brings up the question, what is blockchain? The basic answer is that blockchain technology enables everyone involved in a transaction, such as an update to that spreadsheet we talked about before, to have certainty of what happened, when it happened, and to confirm that everyone who could be affected by that transaction that needs to know about it gets to sign off on its authenticity and accept it together. And once that transaction has happened, it cannot be edited after the fact. And so you have assurance they don't have to reconcile your data after. This can be really powerful. So the two terms, blockchain and DLT, tend to be a little bit interchangeable. But for us, it's important to understand just DLT or distributed ledger technology, the framework that underpins what blockchain really is. So what is it? Well, distributed ledger technology essentially is that decentralized database or that spreadsheet managed by multiple participants across multiple nodes. Blockchain is a type of DLT where transactions are recorded with an immutable cryptographic signature called a hash. And those transactions are grouped in blocks and each new block includes a hash of the previous one, chaining them together. Hence why distributed ledgers are often called blockchains. But why blockchain? It's a good question. A lot of the systems of the past were prone to human error and fraud, where each participant tended to have their own separate ledger or record of the events under dispute. They tended to be inefficient and required things like intermediaries for validating the data in between those parties and building a reputation for themselves. And there were frequent delays and very often losses. In fact, a vast majority of the information we use across industry today tends to still be on pen and paper. So the question really is, can blockchain be the solution? We've talked a little bit about some of the features that you can get with a blockchain, but let's just rehash them really quickly. All of the peers might run their own node as a party on the blockchain and is included on all of the transactions that might be important to them. As the blockchain moves forward and different transactions happen, all of the peers have a single shared ledger. Once the transaction is validated, the record is permanent, secure, and immutable. In addition, you also have the ability to include smart contracts. You can write code that sits on top of the blockchain and validates the transactions with a set of rules that the, any two parties can agree to together beforehand, which can be really powerful and eliminates the need for third parties. In addition, the owner of any transaction has the power to represent anything with their blockchain and move anything of value freely and instantly without the need for intermediaries. 
And of course, you can eliminate paper. And that really is it. That's all you need to know to understand the basics of how blockchain works. So with that, I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please do take a look at our YouTube channel, subscribe, like this video, and I recommend you to reach out to us on quarter.net or find us on LinkedIn or on Twitter. You can attend our regular office hours where we help quarter developers across the globe on slack.quarter.net. And I recommend you take a look at our new developer training, which you can find on training.quarter.net. All of those links will be in the description below. So thanks again for watching, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again.